So before we talk about the noradrenergic synapse, we'll talk about a couple of the basic components of a functional synapse. Uh, the first part here is the axon. It leads into uh, the presynaptic axon terminal. Um, that's where a lot of uh, um, the different reactions and the metabolism of uh, the uh, synapse is going to occur. Um, over here to the right, we have a postsynaptic cell. Um, and down here in the middle, we have our synaptic gap and everything in between. Um, so the art isn't great, it's just a model, but this will give us a good foundation um, for where to um, be able to describe some of the things that take place. So why do we talk about um, the uh, anatomy or the physiology or the different things in a synapse? They're kind of boring. Um, nobody really cares about it per se, um, but it's actually kind of important to understand uh, the physiology behind why the medications that we give work, um, where they work, and how they work. And so, as we begin, um, how do we put together a noradrenergic synapse? Well, um, we got to start out with tyrosine, and tyrosine is an amino acid that we find in our diet. Um, so, it's in a lot of the food that we eat, or um, we can get it from a uh, phenylalanine, uh, which is uh, ultimately uh, broken down by uh, phenylalanine hydroxylase uh, into tyrosine. Um, this is the, the step that is uh, deficient in, um, uh, per se, uh, phenylketonurics, um, as uh, they are unable to uh, transform um, the phenylalanine to tyrosine in this step, um, so they need to take uh, supplemental tyrosine, um, but that's for later. So we got tyrosine, it's in the exocellular space, and we need to bring it in to the cytoplasm of the uh, presynaptic axon terminal. And this happens um, by way of the tyrosine transporter. So the tyrosine transporter um, brings the tyrosine uh, into the cytoplasm of the cell, and um, a couple things happen um, at this point in time. Um, the tyrosine is uh, converted uh, by enzyme uh, tyrosine hydroxylase and um, it is uh, transformed into uh, L-DOPA. And uh, we know L-DOPA also as uh, levodopa um, or the full name uh, being 3,4-dihydroxy uh, um, phenylalanine. And uh, so the 3,4-dihydroxyphenylalanine um, is then uh, converted um, by uh, L-aromatic amino acid decarboxylase. And um, it is converted into our uh, end product of dopamine. Um, so L-aromatic uh, amino acid decarboxylase is also known as a dopa decarboxylase. Uh, you may see it in some of the literature um, as that. So um, after we uh, convert um, our levodopa uh, into our uh, dopamine, um, which is uh, the end product for the dopaminergic uh, synapse, um, we have to figure out a way to store it. So now we have this dopamine. This dopamine needs to be moved into these little buckets um, that we call vesicles. And so the vesicles um, are there to hold the dopamine uh, until we actually need it. And um, it gives us a, a supply um, to hold on to, and um, we're able to uh, release it when we need it. So dopamine is actually uh, needs these little transporters. Um, and in order to make it into the cell, these transporters are the VMAT transporters. Um, there's two types of VMAT transporter, VMAT 1 and 2. Uh, dopamine uh, uses the VMAT 2 transporter, um, where, uh, which is, uh, stands for vesicular monoamine transporter. And uh, it transports a number of monoamines um, into the vesicle. It's the same transporter. And so once we got dopamine inside the cell, um, this is where it becomes a little different. Um, the physiology does uh, between the dopaminergic synapse and the noradrenergic synapse. So inside the vesicle um, of noradrenergic synapse, we have a uh, enzyme 
called dopamine beta hydroxylase. And so within the cell, uh, the dopamine is converted by dopamine beta hydroxylase into norepinephrine. And so now these vesicles um, have norepinephrine uh, inside them. And we can now um, use this. And um, in order for it to be released into the synaptic gap, um, we have to be told. And um, so the body tells us to, um, that we need more norepinephrine. And so um, we uh, induce an action potential um, down the axon into the uh, presynaptic uh, gap or axon terminal. And this uh, activates uh, multiple uh, voltage-gated calcium channels. And these uh, voltage-gated calcium channels cause an influx of calcium from the extracellular space into the um, cytoplasm of the cell. And this causes um, some of those vesicles to move over to the plasma membrane um, of the axon terminal. And exocytos break open and release the contents, which in this case is norepinephrine. So we have norepinephrine um, that's now released into the synaptic gap. And uh, there are a few things that happen at this point in time. Um, one of the things uh, that can occur is that norepinephrine can bind to receptors on the presynaptic terminal. Um, and so these uh, could be autoreceptors or heteroreceptors. And um, they can serve a number of purposes. Uh, more times than not, um, it'll actually uh, cause um, it'll actually uh, reduce the, the amount of norepinephrine that is released back in the cell. So it'll cause a, a negative feedback and inhibit uh, norepinephrine release. Another thing that can occur is it can uh, bind to receptors on the postsynaptic cell um, and activate those receptors and uh, cause whatever response those receptors um, uh, provide. Um, and we'll talk about those in uh, future videos. Or the norepinephrine uh, can just be brought right back into the cell. And so um, the norepinephrine is brought in through a norepinephrine transporter back into um, the axon terminal. Um, also of note is uh, norepinephrine can also travel through uh, dopamine transporters as well. Um, so um, it's not, those are pretty versatile transporters. Once inside the cell, a couple things can happen. Uh, one of the things uh, that can happen in the norepinephrine is it can be metabolized. And um, so norepinephrine is metabolized um, primarily by monoamine oxidase uh, type A, um, type A only, um, within the, uh, the presynaptic axon terminal. And after um, it binds with uh, the monoamine oxidase um, and is broken down, um, it's broken down into uh, dope gall. Um, it's actually broken down into a lot of different things. Uh, if it's actually, it can be um, exercise toast out of the cell um, as um, norepinephrine and be bro broken down by a comet into norepinephrine. Um, nor um, but within the cell, it's broken down by monooxidase A to uh, dope gall, which stands for 3,4-didydydydydydydydydydydydydydydydydydydydydydydydydydydydydydydydydydydydydydydydydydydydydydydydydydydydydydydydydydydydydydydydydydydydydydydydydydydydydydydydydydydydydydydydydydydydydydydyd
and at that point in time it's fully functional and it can be reused again um, for future use. So, and that's about it.